Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's play some Europa Universals 4 with the new Emperor expansion pack. Big shout out and thank you to Paradox for granting me early access to Emperor. And uh, this is the 1.30 Austria patch. I, I will say it has been some time since I played EU4. Um, I'm going to be pretty rusty. But uh, let's let's dive in and take a look and see what they've see what they've changed. Um, I probably haven't played, I probably have not played EU4 in oh I don't know, six months maybe um, or longer even. I mean it's been a while. Um, let's go and jump into some single player here. So as you can see, there's a lot changed with this new expansion pack. Um, France has been broken up into a few smaller vassals. We've got some new countries here. Um, Croatia is now a personal union under Hungary. We've got uh, some Herzegovina going on over here. Some Bosnia stuff. Yeah, a lot, a lot has changed. Um, I debated heavily what country to play as. I debated a little bit of England. I debated France. Um, I debated Austria. We may actually do an Austria campaign just for fun. Um, possibly also Naples. But in this run, as you guys can probably tell from the title of this video, um, we're going to be trying to Bohemia. So Bohemia is, is central. It's in the HRE. There is a new religion, um, the Hussite religion, that has to do specifically with Bohemia around this time. Um, so I figured it'd be a good sort of starter country to play as. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Let's see, we're playing on... Uh, yeah, normal difficulty is fine. Historical Lucky Nations, all the normal sort of options. No custom setups, nothing like that. We're going to do a historical setup, historical game. So yeah, this is the new uh, Emperor expansion. Um, it costs $20. It releases, I believe, June 9th? No. No, yeah. I think June 9th. Tuesday, June 9th. Yeah, so I'll try and have a review up for you guys by that time. I'm gonna, gonna play and, and see how it is. Um, I'm also cu curious if you guys are if you guys are curious. I'm playing um, with the resolution of 2560 by 1440, but I'm trying out the new graphics user interface. Um, they have a UI scaling now, so I, I've kind of buffed up the, the UI. So far, it looks like everything is okay. I don't see anything that's, that's too sort of... Um, not commonplace or something that looks out of place. Everything looks pretty good. So if you guys are playing at higher resolutions, the the, the experimental UI scaling looks to be pretty pretty decent. So um, yeah, so let's see. We're in as Bohemia. We have an interregnum, obviously. We have no king at, uh, at the start of 1444. Let's see. I've never actually played Bohemia before, I don't think. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Advisor cost minus 10%. Um, Imperial authority growth modifier plus 10%. Um, those are okay. The Imperial growth modifier is nice. But if you can't become emperor, it doesn't help you that much. And then advisor cost is okay. Um, let's see, we get tolerance of heathens, yearly legitimacy, inventory combat ability is nice. Um, national rest is okay. Technology cost minus 10% is pretty kick-ass. Um, Spility cost modifier minus 10%. And then cost of advisors with ruler's culture, pretty decent. Um, we start now, instead of owning Celestia proper, we actually have two vassals now. Opal and uh, Glogal. Both of our vassals, uh, vassals. And then we have a truce with Hungary. So we will, we will jump on in. Let's go Iron Man mode. Bohemian. Human. Sure. Let's do it. Or as they say, Czechia, I guess. They call it Czechia. Like I said, it's been a while since I played you 4 You will have to bear with me. We will take this kind of slow. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let's speed 4. Bohemia is one of the foremost nations in the Holy Roman Empire. Its military might and economy wealth second only to the Habsburgs of Austria. The current occupants of the Imperial Throne. In recent times, Bohemia itself was ruled from Austria by Albrecht II, whose death in 1440 left the throne of Bohemia vacant. The question of his succession has not yet been resolved, and the Austrians are likely to press their claims. In addition to uncertainties surrounding the succession, Bohemia comes off the back of several decades of struggle between its rulers and the Hussites, whom many in the Catholic world view as heretics. Although the radical Hussite faction was defeated, the moderate Tabrit faction led by Yuri Podobrad remain influential and will surely wish to have their say in the question of succession and in other matters. Further threats, but also potential allies, lie to the east in the mighty nations of Poland and Hungary. Both have been thrown into chaos by the death of Vladislaus III Jagiellon at the hands of the Ottoman Empire at the Battle of Varna. This has left them leaderless, with Hungary looking particularly vulnerable, but their strength should not be underestimated. An ambitious Bohemian king could settle, or sorry, could use the situation to his advantage and gain valuable allies or valuable new land for the throne. In Germany, many of the imperial princes view Bohemia as outsiders. Despite its status as an elector, due to cultural differences and worry about living in its comparatively large shadow, 
an expansionist king might look for French conquests among them. Fresh conquests, sorry, not French conquests. Well, maybe that too. But their support will be necessary for any fresh push towards becoming the Holy Roman Emperor. Choices abound, lie ahead, and many threats and opportunities for the Kingdom of Bohemia to navigate. Okay. So, I've been thinking a little bit. Um, what do we want to do in this campaign? I think trying out the new Hussite mechanics would be pretty cool. Um, so, obviously, right now, because we are Catholic, Hussite is a heretic religion here. So, we could... It looks like we could convert this stuff. Um, it does not look easily convertible, though. Let's see. Does it tell us what types of bonuses we get? We actually get infantry combat ability and missionary strength versus heretics plus 2%. That is kick ass. So probably we're going to be going Hussite for sure. Uh, so far, it looks like our vassals are nice and loyal. So we don't have any issues there. Um, I apologize a little bit. It's a little hard to see the army numbers. I apologize about that. I may have to mess around with the UI scaling in between, in between episodes. So who are we rival to? Denmark, Hungary, and Poland. That is unfortunate because I actually would have liked to possibly be friends with one of them. But this does mean that we could be friends with Austria. And on one hand, Austria could enforce claims against us. I think they actually do get a CB at some point against us. On the other hand, if we are allied to the Emperor in the Holy Roman Empire, he probably, as long as we vote for him, he probably would not mind us conquering around in the HRE. So we, we may actually get a free hand to kind of just do stuff in the HRE. Now at the same time, if we become Hussite, we might be the pariah of Europe anyway. So for now, um, I'm going to go ahead and not pick any rivals. Potentially also because Hungary might fall into a PU with Austria. There's going to be some stuff kind of kind of going on there. So we're going to just kind of play by ear, see how it goes. Um, we have a comparatively strong army. We actually have a pretty decent economy too. Let's go and take a look at our merchants here. Let's see. So we have merchants pretty much going towards uh, Saxony. Yeah, I don't really see any reason to change that in particular. Um, let's see. We have four cavalry. If we needed to save money, I would say to back that off a bit. You could you could make do with two cavalry in the early game, but for now, I think it's fine. Um, we'll we'll build up to force force limit with the inventory. I think. Um, we've got enough money to afford that, and then let's go and get royal marriages. I think we'll just get an alliance with Austria right off the bat. That's another thing I noticed, is you actually don't have to wait a day for diplomats to come back anymore from countries. It looks like the response is instantaneous, and you just have to wait for your diplomat to come back from the country. But, like, I could you know, go Royal Mary whoever, and I think they, they accept that same day. Yeah, so, so really, that's kind of cool. I think that's actually pretty interesting. Um, to be fair, if you wanted more money... There is a part of me that wants to enable Scudage on these guys. But I don't know if we are really in need of any cash. It'd be about half a duck in a month. So we'll, we'll leave it for now. Um, do we have any generals? Let's see. The estates. There's some different stuff with the estates. I have not really kept up with those changes at all. So you'll have to forgive me on that one. Um, let's see. So you could do different privileges with these guys. It's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, so it gives you different different bonuses. Max absolute, absolutism, right of council, noble influence, which is for 10%. Um, it's, so it's not the same thing as like taking money from them. It's not the same thing, you know, as um, getting a general, that kind of thing. So they have general costs. You lose mummy tradition. You know, you can have, let's see, what else? Increased levies. You know, so national tax modifier goes down, but you get more manpower. 40%, that's nothing to scoff at. So if you ever need... More troops. This this would seriously help you out. Our max men power right now is actually sixteen thousand, which is pretty small by anybody's standards. So that's that's kind of interesting. But yeah, we're we're gonna play it kind of slow. Let's see, immoral prices. Um, do we piss off the burgers? I actually would not mind. I don't want to lose any money. I wouldn't mind putting down these this peasant revolt though. Let's see if we can just grab a general real fast. Zero two two zero. Um, Erudahori. Okay, so over here. So let's just put some troops in there. We'll take care of that. I am hoping we don't go to war. Let's see. We'll go, we'll go and do that. Let's take a look at this. The Hussite War is concluded with religious peace between the moderate Utrechtist faction of the Hussites and the Catholic Church. Thus far, the compacts have been honored and peace has returned to Bohemia, yet tensions with the Hussites have not disappeared. The followers of Hus count many among the people and the nobility among their number. Perhaps we ought to eradicate their heresy before they take up arms once again. 
So we do get Mystery Strength versus Heretics, but we'll have some National Unrest, or we get Tolerance to Heretics. I'll go, I'll go with the Tolerance. I think that's fine. Okay, we lost um, barely anything, really. So that was, that was fine. That worked out okay. So we're making some money. We're building up to Force Summit right now. We have a 222, which means we generate 555. For now, I think we'll stay on that. You could probably prioritize military power just to get ahead in the meantime, but I don't know if there's a big reason for it, at least for now. Um, let's go Rome Mary, the Habsburgs, and I think we will try to improve relations with them as well. Oh, we got a Yuri von Habsburg, 455. Interesting. Uh, King of Austria has laid claim to our throne. Yeah, they most likely will not attack us, though. I doubt it. And I think, actually, there is some sort of event to get us a different ruler, if I remember correctly. King of Italy and the Empire. Okay. So as long as Austria is our friend and or as long as we are not emperor, we should probably support whoever the emperor is in order to not get unlawful territory. Um, my... The way that I see going about this, if it is that we cannot expand into the empire, we definitely should push east. However, Hungary is probably not a target because he's allied to Austria and Bologna. Poland is more so, but at the same time, he may get that union with Lithuania and then he's a big old blob that we can't really, um, uh, that we can't really deal with. Let's see, the Neapolitan succession. Let's see, looks like the King of Aragon has, uh, in his last will and testament, bequeathed Naples to be independent. So it looks like he's independent now. That's kind of cool. Let's see, we have, um, we have a fort here and then in our capital. I wish this was in better terrain, actually. Hmm. It's a little unfortunate. Let's see. Um, let's see. The Great Bullion Famine. Let's see. We often pay in gold to import silk, alum, spices, and pearls from the east as trade between east and west becomes increasingly frequent. The deficit of gold in Europe becomes more apparent. Gold has become an increasingly rare commodity in our world, but the demand for these luxuries has not decreased. First Christian European power to secure a new source of gold will reap great benefits. I think there is a gold mine somewhere. Yeah, so we have a gold mine here, so we're going to want to buff that up to at least 10 development. Or 10, 10 production. Um, yeah, we'll do that at some point. Let's take a look at the estates. Let's see, is it under economic? Where is it actually? Possibly... No, I think it is political, right? States. Seeing who controls what. Oh, is that not a mechanic anymore? Okay, so you can't actually give it, um, specific estates to... Um, so so specific provinces no longer belong to, uh, belong to specific estates. Wow! That's actually really interesting. Holy shit. That's kind of cool. Let's see. The Curie Controller has picked a papal bull. We're going to get development costs and tolerance of heathens. Kick ass! Tolerance of Heathens goes up. We already had it anyway. Well, so Heathens, yeah. So actually, Heretics is our cult, is our religion. Heathens is other people. So Christ, um, Christiana Pietis. Let's see. Uh, Barbara of Scilly. The Royal Order of the Dragon was created by Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund and Barbara of Scilly, Holy Roman Empress and Queen of Hungary and Bohemia. Let's see. Do we want an advisor? Um... Skill 2, Diplomatic Rip, plus 1, 50% cheaper to employ. Nah, I'm gonna worry about it. For now, I think we're okay. I actually would not mind an relations guy, though. We can afford him. Because this is gonna help us out a little bit. Damn, we actually have a really strong king. 455. Five. It's impressive. Yeah, it's actually pretty impressive. Okay, so as far as expansion routes, who do we want to attack? Well, Saxony wants to be a friend. We have one more relationship slot available. Saxony's not bad. I have fears of pushing south just because I think Austria is going to want to push in that direction. Um, we're going to want to stay away from any sort of free cities. Let's see, so Munich is a... Munich is a county. The Palatinate is a Elector Palatine. Let's see, this is a bishopric here. Couple allies, nothing nothing too crazy though. Um, is a vassal of Munich. So we could attack Munich. We take on Passau. And then he's allied with Augsburg. We might be able to take that on. 
Let's see, Babe Ruth here is a junior partner of Ansbach. Um, might not be too bad. He's in a defensive league, though. We definitely want to stay away from... Yeah, any sort of free cities at all. Let's see, Bemberg is a vassal of Versberg. Thuringia is a junior partner of Saxony. We, you know, expanding against the Saxons is probably not a bad idea. Um, at the same time... You, on one hand, we could attack Brandenburg. On the other, making him a friend might not be so bad. But I also feel like Brandenburg and Austria are going to be coming to blows. Especially if this guy's expanding in the north. Let's see, Hungary's opinion of us. Well, I mean, we're rivals anyway, right? So, I'll, I'll take the diplomatic power. Yeah, I, I don't think that rivalry is going to change anytime soon. Unless this guy gets into PU and gets released or something. He's still got that Regency Council for Ladislaus Posthumus. Yeah, so that's not that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's integrate the vassals first. Let's give it a uh, let's give it a couple years. Let's integrate the vassals, and then we will uh, we will figure out where we want to expand. Um, I'll keep that relationship slot open. Brandenburg is not a bad idea, but at the same time, he's a pretty good target to expand against. We can't just attack him though, because he's allied with Poland. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Looks like um, England and France are going to war. Hungary has uh, rivaled Poland. All right, let's take a look at this. Successor of Vladislaus III. Okay, so he's got the Union. So we definitely don't want to have any beef with him. Return of the Hussites. Attempts at enforcing the religious peace between Hussites and Catholics have broken down despite our best efforts. Yuri Z. Poderbrod, leader of the Hussite faction, has raised an army and now marches upon Prague. He means to make himself king of Bohemia and secure religious freedom for the followers of Hus. Jan Hus knew the truth. Our current leader will die. We become Hussite. We have a 5-4-3. Okay, that's that's pretty damn good. This will apply to our ruler and all possible heirs. Let the king elector follow Hus, the nation follows Rome. So our current ruler will die. We get Hussite rule. We lose a lot of yearly papal influence, unfortunately. Let's see, inventory comet ability is pretty kick-ass for the rest of our ruler's life. Lose 100 papal influence. This is what I don't understand, is if we become Hussite... And then we could just destroy the pretenders. Yeah, we can win easily against them in Praha and Rudahori. Papal State's opinion on Bohemia changed by 50 or plus 50. Jan Hus knew the truth. Us becomes a new state religion of Bohemia. So we lose the Habsburg the Habsburg ruler. I kind of want to go for this just because I kind of want to check out the new Hussite mechanics. At the same time, this is relatively dangerous where we might isolate ourselves from everybody else in Europe. But uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, ooh. Looks like Austria broke the relations. Hmm. He actually would re-up that alliance, though. Let's see. Hussite Regency. Missionary maintenance cost. Let's take that. We can convert some of the Catholics. Can I get... I can't get a missionary. Or an Inquisitor. The House of Kusha. Okay, we got a 463 heir. Damn. That's actually pretty good. Um, let's see. We cannot ask Austria for this as we need to have a positive opinion of them. Currently at 97. Okay. So we lost our alliance, which is unfortunate. And my guess is everybody in Europe hates us. Let's see. Opal still wants uh we want a royal marriage though. As long as these guys stay loyal, I have no problem with them being Catholic. We can take care of that in time. Let's see, Moldavia is now ruled by Roman Musat. Let's see, offer alliance, neutral attitude, Austria's normal neutral attitude towards Bohemia, Austria's too many diplomatic relations. Army strength, navy strength, not same religion. Okay. So we did we did um We did lose uh, access to the Curia, and nobody will vote for me because I'm Hussite. Okay, that's fine. I still am an elector, though. They don't get to take the electorship from me. This should be an interesting game. Let's see, Brandenburg. We definitely do not want to attack him. Ladislaus Posthumus of Austria is the new emperor. Well, well, he's supposed to be. This guy is only seven years old. There's a, a regent in his name. But he may die. 
I'm kind of curious to see what happens then. Um, I could beef this up a little bit. Let's see. I do want an Inquisitor whenever I can get it. Um, so the Church of Bohemia, we do get church power because technically I think Hussite is a Protestant religion. Um, if I am reading that right, I think it is. So we can select an aspect of faith. We can get tolerance of the true faith. War score cost versus other religions. Harsh treatment cost. National manpower modifier. Tolerance of heretics. We don't get a lot of conversion. Clergy influence. I'll maintain that meta for now. We don't get a lot of conversion modifiers, unfortunately. Um, punishment of sins, healing corruption, nobility influence, harsh treatment cost. Let's see the clergy. Can we get any sort of... Yeah, missionary maintenance cost. That's not a bad idea. We lose maximum absolutism, and they gain more influence. How much do they have now? Not too much. We want this guy. We can afford him. 40 military power for 32 ducats. That's a pretty good deal. Um, this missionary strength is nice, but I also kind of don't want to have too much negative tolerance of heretics and heathens. I like the missionary strength. At the same time, it's not particularly... It doesn't take a long time to convert stuff right now anyway. And let's see, how much is this missionary costing me? Barely anything. 0 0.16 ducats per month. So this won't help us either. So this this would speed things up, but it's not particularly necessary. So I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on it. Austria for now is pretty neutral. Um, I don't mind pissing him off. I just don't want to rush into it. Let's see, Thuringia... Let's see, Saxony. I may be able to get some alliance with some of these guys. Let's see. Saxony, Vinia, but Bohemia. Reassessment survey, local unrest. So we get more army professionalism. Let's see, this is for 10 years. Damn, local unrest plus eight? That's everywhere? Holy God. What's that now? Yeah, we go from like... Like no unrest to definitely having it across the country. I'm going to lose that armor professionalism. It's not entirely necessary right now. I'll decrease the army maintenance for now. We have a little bit of inflation, unfortunately. We'll tech up, and then we'll probably start improving this uh, this gold mine. That sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, I don't want to jump into... rivaling just a whole bunch of people. I kind of want to... Kind of want to see what we can maneuver here. Let's see. Turn to heretics, religious unity. Damn, dude, that shock damage received is pretty strong. What's your conversion cost? We could make the whole world check if we wanted to. That's not bad. If that was cheaper, I'd probably take that. Okay, so Lundberg is now an elector. Okay, we're still voting for Austria for now. Your authority is not bad. Let's see, once the Protestant Reformation kicks off, it should be an interesting game. As, I think as long as we keep our neighbors relatively okay and calm, we should be fine. I don't know if anybody wants to particularly declare war on me. There's a few people around here. Nope, nobody that's like hostile. Besides my rivals, obviously. But even then, Poland can't declare on me uh, unless Austria joins. Um, and neither can Hungary. He's not part of the empire either. So, at least in that sense, we are protected. So that's nice. You see, it looks like England's getting his ass kicked by France. No surprises there. Let's take that. We should do pretty good on technology for, for a while. 
Um, let's see any buildings? Let's see local trade power. We can get one in our capital. We have a, a market town there. Is that truce with Hungary? Yeah, he can't attack us anyway. He's got a Regency Council. Let's see. Junior partners, Croatia. Naples is independent. Let's see. Tunis. Oh, wow. Let's see. George I of Unhalt is a new emperor. New lawful sovereign of the Holy Roman Empire is promised to, be, uh, promised to protect the rights of the states as emperor. Let's go and up this army maintenance just in case Hungary gets any ideas. I highly doubt Unhalt is going to defend us. Let's see, it looks like Ulrich von Wurttemberg. Austria has no legal error. Session war between Hungary and Poland. No royal marriage. Italian engineer available. Um, we go into debt for this guy, but 40 military power is not bad. I'll take it. I will also take that, the national epic. See, there's some sort of war going on. These guys are on the move. It looks like we're fighting Venice and Burgundy. What war? Uh, Venetian conquest of Ferrara. Really? Allied with Epirus and the Knights. So Venice declared war on Ferrara. Ferrara is in the Empire. Venice is not. So my guess is Anhal, Brandenburg, Hungary, and Croatia have come to the aid Okay. Let's see, we can't attack. Yeah, so Hungary is allied to Austria Alhal Bologna, so we can't attack him. And we definitely cannot attack Brandenburg. Let's see, Anhalt. He actually doesn't have that many friends. We may want to consider attacking some of the smaller smaller guys around here. Um, I'm not gonna lie, going for Passau is not bad. He's a vassal of Munich, and Munich really only has one ally. Augsburg and Bregenz. We could probably take them all on. Let's see, Munich, Munich and Constance. Passau, Munich, we could probably take two territories in that war. Not a bad idea. Let's, let's integrate the vassals first before we... Before we consider anything else, let's give it a, a bit of time. Yeah. Um, for now, since these guys are at war, I think we're okay. I don't think we need our maintenance. I'm going to try and pay off this debt. Build up a war chest. And uh, let's see. We got through six years. Okay. I'm going to take a quick break here, guys. We're going to take this kind of slow, just because I haven't played in a while. So thank you so much uh, for watching, as always. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to want to see me play any other countries or anything like that. And uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much.